the Arizona Signal Watcher DXing video blog. Episode 3, Super Loop Antenna Part 3, Impedance Matching Transformer. All right, so we have to get this AC signal from the loop antenna to the radio. And the problem is that the antenna and the, uh, uh, the feed line have very different impedances. Now, impedance is just the AC version of resistance, so it's measured in ohms. So the uh, normal cables you use for radio antennas are 50 ohms. But the loop antenna uh, is going to be around 1,000 ohms. Now, it could be a little less than that. could be a little more than that. And so if we want to get as much of the signal as possible from the antenna into the feed line and thus into the radio, we have to use a transformer. We have to transform the uh, from the high impedance antenna to the low impedance feed line. And for the transformer, well, what we're going to do is we're going to take the square root of the impedance ratio. Now, if it's 800 ohms for the, uh, for the antenna, we would have the square root of 16 or 4 to 1. If we do 1,000, it's about 4.5 to 1, so somewhere around 4, 4 or 5 to 1. And what that number corresponds to is that's the ratio of the number of turns of wire you need on your on the antenna side of the transformer to the feed line side of the transformer. Now, this is a big ass transformer. Now, the transformer we're going to use is going to be just a little bit smaller than this. But the key is that ratio of the turns of wire from one to the other. Now, the other point, though, is that the actual, um, what we call the inductance, um, which is how well the um, uh, one side or the other of the transformer can store magnetic energy. Remember that an AC circuit is electrical and magnetic energy oscillating between each other. And it's this, uh, the magnetic energy, well, when you have a changing magnetic field in in uh, one side of the transformer, that creates a changing magnetic field in the other side of the transformer. So the inductance, uh, how well it stores magnetic energy, well, we have this value called the inductive reactance, and that's the component of the impedance that's due to the inductor, due to the magnetic storage capacity. And as a rule of thumb, this needs to be about four times um, the resistance of the antenna at the lowest frequency we're going to look at. Now, if we're talking about 800 to 1,000 ohms, well, then our inductive reactance has to be about 3,200 to 4,000 ohms. And the equation we use here to calculate what that inductance has to be, well, we take this um, in, we call the inductive reactance, X sub L, which is 3200 to 4000 or so, and divide by 2 pi f, where f is the frequency. So at 3200 ohms and 4000 ohms, I've calculated what the inductance needs to be for 200 kilohertz, which would cover all the way through the long wave band, and 500 kilohertz, which would cover just all the way through the medium wave band. And these values are in microhenries. So this is the uh, these, are, these are the inductance values that we'd be shooting for, depending on exactly uh, how much uh, frequency coverage we want. Uh, frequently we use what's called a Type 73 core. That's just the composition. And the reason why that's used is because it has a very, it's very easy to get a high inductance. This is basically a measurement of the inductance in um, microhenries that you get if you had 1,000 turns of wire around that core. Now, I, when I did the original calculation, I had used a value of about 8,500 for this, but uh, I was looking at uh, looking online, and a better value is probably around 12,000 for this, and this is this is quite high. And so the induction, the inductance that you get is that a sub L value, that value per thousand turns, divided by a thousand times the number of turns squared because each turn affects each other. So you've got turn one affecting turn two, three, four, five, whatever, and turn two affecting one, blah, 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 and all the other ones. And so that ends up giving you an n squared value. And so you invert this to figure out how many turns you need. 
So to get this um, inductance that we need for um, so that we can get coverage down to 200 or 500 kilohertz, there's our equation. We plug in those inductance values, and this is what we get. The number of turns for the secondary coil, which is the one that has the larger number of turns. So if we're talking about um, 800 ohms of resistance for the terminating resistor of the antenna, well, we need uh, 3,200 ohms here for the inductive reactance. That means that we, need, we would need about 14.6 turns to go down to 200 kilohertz and 9.2 turns if we only needed to get down to 500. And if we go up to the uh, 1,000 ohm terminating resistance, the values are about 16 and 10. And 200 kilohertz is about as far down as we really uh, really need to go for this uh, for this antenna. Now, if you were trying to do something where you were getting all the way down, say, to the uh, uh, the WWV time signal at 60 kilohertz, you'd, you'd want to go with even more turns. But this suggests that something uh, around uh, 16 turns is, is as much as you need and for if you just if you just care about the AM broadcast band and don't want to go down to long wave you can get by with a number something like uh, say 10 11 12 something like that um, but we can go with 16 here and if we go with 16 for the number of turns of the secondary the primary is going to be that number divided by about four or five depending on exactly what ratio we're talking about for the primary, uh, sorry, secondary to primary. So uh, a reason, reasonable value here would be to use, say, 16 turns and four, 16 turns for the secondary, four turns for the primary. That gives us a factor of four. If you went from 16 to five, you know, that would that would be kind of going the wrong way. But 16 to three, uh, that would be too much in the other direction. So what we need is um, a transformer with 16 turns on the secondary, the side that's going to be connected to the antenna, and four turns connected to the feed line. All right, so here is the binocular core that I'm gonna be using. This is the Type 73 core. And for the wiring, I'm gonna use a 26 gauge magnet wire. This is the standard type of wire you use for these sorts of uh, things. And what I need to do is I need to take one piece of this, wind it back and forth through there 16 times, and that's the piece that's going to connect to the antenna leads. And then I need another piece that's going to go through four times, and that's going to connect to the feed line that goes to the radio. I have 16 turns, plus I want to leave extra so I can run the leads. Um, to the uh, banana plug jacks and so I'm gonna pull out about 20 inches or so for the first um, uh, maybe a little more for the uh, long wire for the 16 turns so I just thread this through uh, leaving plenty of extra and kind of kink that there and then now I'm just gonna run this back and forth 16 times and yes, it's uh, as tedious as it sounds. Luckily, it's only 16 though. If this were a, uh, uh, if this if this type of material wasn't uh, wasn't so easily uh, turned into an inductor, uh, this would you know you you can have hundreds of turns. And of course, a transformer that you might have in some kind of power supply, of course, can be hundreds of uh, hundreds of turns. You might not be doing it by hand, but now. Uh, you do have to uh, be careful. This this wire will tend to kink, and uh, and uh, so you, you've got to you know make sure it's kind of unwound there. And this will get easier as you get more and more turns because you'll have less wire to thread through each time. So the first turn through is a little effort, and each subsequent one. It's easier and easier. And so, hey, I've got two turns done. Make sure to pull it snug each time. And now I just have to do this another 14 times. And 16. Huh. So that wasn't bad. And you see I left plenty of slack there. 
and I can trim that later. And now what I need to do, make sure that's tight on both ends, and now I need to put in a smaller, uh, smaller piece and do the four winds. Now uh, we do want to be very careful now that we don't confuse what's what. So this is this is the uh, um, the the end with the lot, lots of turns. That's the secondary in this case. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this with a uh, with a sharpie. And there we go. There's the four turns. Um, this could have been maybe a little bit neater, uh, but that's okay. Uh, it's going to come out over the edges a little bit. And this is not a, a, a super precise science here. Um, you you uh, might lose a little bit of signal if you don't have this exactly right, but as long as you're pretty close, you're going to do all right. And so now uh, I have to uh, mount this in a box and attach it um, to uh, banana plug sockets. So uh, again, using what I have around, I would actually like something a little shorter, but this is what I happen to have. This is uh, another Hammond box, uh, 1591A, S, and then GY, again, it's gray. So I need to mount this in here. And one set of leads is going to go to the banana plugs that are going to go, actually turn this around, the banana banana plugs that are going to go on either end. And then the other set of wires uh, is going to go to this uh, BNC connector. And so what I'll have to do is, and, and what I am going to do, is I'm going to use, this is really the, the bottom of the box, but I'm actually going to mount all of the hardware on the bottom of the box so I can take the lid easily on and off without disturbing anything. So I'll, I'll uh, drill holes to put this through here and I'll drill holes in the ends to uh, put the banana plug jacks exactly like I did for the variable resistor. It's going to follow a similar pattern there and then we'll be good to go. So what you need to do is drill a 3 8 inch hole in the center for the BNC socket to go in and then drill uh, what I did uh, for this were uh, 5 30 seconds holes for screws to go through. Um, that makes them a little larger than they really need to be but that also gives you um, a little bit of slop uh, to play with because it, it's it's not trivial especially without a drill press to get this exactly right and uh, so uh, give yourself a little bit of slop here and you can get the screws in that way and then for the banana plug jacks well quarter inch holes same as we did here and what we're going to do is it is that this is going to be the downside like this and so that's why we put the put all the holes on this side of the uh, box and so that way it'll sit like this and um, that'll make it easier to route the cables close to the ground so I have the hardware mounted now I did the same thing here that I did uh, for the variable resistor uh, I just have the uh, banana socket through there and I have a lock washer, a regular washer and a nut on both sides if you look closely, you'll see that I somehow managed to uh, not get these quite lined up, but that's actually not a big deal. Just a little annoying uh, that I kind of missed that little detail. Now, here, this is a little unconventional. Um, I uh, used these 6mm uh, M3 hex screws, uh, but then I realized I didn't have any, um, didn't have any nuts for them. So what I did have though are these spacers. Um, so in a pinch, I use those, tighten those down really good. That's fine. It doesn't really matter if there's a little bit hanging down there. We've got plenty of room in this uh, particular box. So uh, you know whatever you can use in a pinch, uh, that's not really uh, going to be any kind of a major problem. So and again, this is all on the top, well the bottom of the box, which will which will be like this, and. I will also now mount 
the transformer, impedance matching transformer, uh, in here um, probably with, uh, I'll probably use double sided tape on that, uh, maybe double sided foam tape. That actually sticks pretty well. This is a nice uh, flat surface. And uh, then wire this up. The, uh, and in fact, this is, this is how it'll lay in here. The, because these are the leads for the high impedance antenna, and these are the leads for the low impedance feed line. So uh, one of these will hook in there for the signal uh, line. And for the ground, uh, I can either attach it, solder it in there, or I can actually attach it to one of these uh, one of these screws here, or one of these uh, spacers, because uh, it's all connected. It's all this whole thing is a ground plane. So now that I have this wired up, let's uh, do a couple of sanity checks here. So I'm checking for continuity uh, along the antenna side, and I do have that. And what I'm checking here is that I have continuity here. And um, uh, of course, this will all change when I have this in the uh, actual circuit, but uh, that looks okay. Now, let's double check here that I don't have continuity where I don't want continuity. So that's good. Let's just do that. That's good. And what I want to show you, this is the, the first transformer box that I made. And it looks the same on the inside, uh, but I put it in an inexpensive electrical box, uh, which was didn't seem like a, which seemed like a pretty good idea at the time. And actually, it's not a uh, still not a bad idea. We can double check that. So we have about the same there, and we can check for continuity here, which we have, and we don't have continuity here. And so this one, uh, I took this one out of service while it was uh, still working just fine because I wanted to make the smaller boxes uh, because I wanted something uh, very compact. Now I'm going with the larger size. And let me just show you really quick what's inside of this. It does look about the same, but let's have a look. Oops. And there we go. In this case, I kept the uh, banana plugs intact and I put a solder lug on there. And so I have the, uh, in this case, um, I was using a 12 to 3 ratio, which I changed to 16 to 4. Uh, the 12 to 3 uh, was originally because I was going to just use, this is the first one I did, I was just going to use this for a uh, for an AM antenna. And there we are, the electronic guts of the super loop antenna. The variable resistor for uh, the termination and the transformer to uh, get the impedance match between this high impedance, high resistance antenna and the much lower resistance feed line going to the radio.